Uh, so, uh, so I'll start over. First off, I'd like to thank Convergent for inviting us uh, to Convergent Insight. Um, today we're presenting on leveraging artificial intelligence in the video surveillance space. Um, my name is Chad Umbarger. I'm the National Account Sales Director uh, at Hanwha TechWin. I manage the corporate relationship between Hanwha TechWin America and Convergent Technologies. Um, during today's presentation, we're going to talk a couple minutes about who Hanwha is, but mainly focus on our artificial intelligence and how you can use that to enhance your video surveillance from a detection portfolio, uh, best shot uh, technology, as well as forensic searching and some real world use cases. Uh, so real quick, uh, summary of Hanwha. Hanwha Group is a South Korean company. Uh, we're based out of, of Incheon uh, with over 67 years in business, we started in 1952 as Korean explosives and have grown through several verticals in the industry, uh, from aerospace to solar power, uh, construction, uh, uh, leisure power. We're ranked 261st on the global Fortune 500. And our video surveillance division, which is Hanwha Techwin, uh, has been in the industry for a little over 30 years. We celebrate our 30th anniversary in 2020 uh, in the video surveillance space. So as a company, we do offer a full solution. Uh, we make everything from cameras to transmission products, video management systems, uh, artificial intelligence, analytics, software. So we do have a comprehensive end-to-end -end solution. But our products are also open platform and we walk, work with various third-party solutions out here. And on the screen now is a, just a, a small snapshot of some of the third parties. So if you have existing infrastructure out there on uh, existing BMS like Genetech or Milestone or Saline, our, our cameras and, and products work with those as well. So it's not you're not locked into a Hanwha solution going forward. You can use us uh, uh, with third-party products. But to get to the core today, the core of today's presentation is artificial intelligence. Uh, so the first thing I'd like to talk about within the artificial intelligence is how we can leverage artificial intelligence from a detection standpoint to help improve our video surveillance system out there. Uh, you know, historically, if we're trying to use anything from any kind of analytics, whether it's basic video motion detection, line crossing, enter exit zones, Prior to AI, we went on a motion based where the, the camera or the VMS would look at pixel changes within the scene. So if you look at the bottom left hand of this picture on your screen, uh, everywhere you see these red boxes is where the camera would essentially detect motion and would create an event based upon the motion detection. The problem with that is it made a lot of analytics create a lot of false alarms. With Hanwha's artificial intelligence solution now, we have a deep learning algorithm built into the camera where the camera can actually identify the difference between people and vehicles, faces, and license plates. So now we can set up our events to only detect what we want to look for. So if we're looking at a scene here, like we see on the screen with some people playing in a fountain where there's a lot of motion type scenes, and all we care about is people or vehicles, we could flag that and it, it will ignore all the other anomalies and only key in on the people, the faces, or the vehicles within the scene. So it allows us to take complex scenes with a lot of background motion and actually trigger into only what we want to see. So with a prior to artificial intelligence with motion-based analytics, all these fish swimming in the background would give me false alarm events like crazy. But with our AI, you can see is we're only detecting the people and we're only detecting the faces within the scene. So this virtually eliminates false alarms and false acquisitions for cloud changes, uh, shadow casting, raindrops, um, dogs and cats and wildlife running through my scene. And we can narrow it down and only look for the things that we want to look for within the, the AI solution. The next thing I want to talk about is our best shot capabilities. Uh, this is a, a nice feature that Hanwha builds into our artificial intelligence cameras. Uh, what this allows the, the system to do is when it sees a scene and it detects the characteristics, like we're doing a person that detects the person, the camera detects the most reliable image of that person and saves that as what we call a best shot. 
Uh, now, what you can use this for is depending upon your recording solution, you can actually have it when it triggers an AI only save this best shot image. So if all you want to do is catalog a snapshot of everybody who came through your front door to building, you can have it save just that snapshot instead of a large video. Uh, you can also use this as a preview image. So within like our wave VMS solution, as you search uh, alarm events, it'll preview up a thumbnail of the best shot from that event. And then you can click on the video from there. Uh, so depending upon whether we're looking for a person best shot or face vehicle or license plate best shot, this is something that's done in the camera. Uh, and it can be saved into a, a recording platform for, for further investigation purposes. So as you can see in here, this is it can detect multiple scenes at the same time. So as we see this heavy traffic area, you see a lot of people going around everywhere. You see an orange box is the person detection, the yellow box is the face detection. You can see the cars coming through here with the green boxes. And as things pass through the scenes, it's collecting the best shot over here on the side. As you notice right now, this video we're watching is within the camera web page because our artificial intelligence solution runs 100% on the edge on the camera and doesn't require a server on the back end to operate. This makes us more compatible with various third party solutions. It also re reduces the amount of infrastructure needed on scene. Uh, so the last piece of it on here is the forensic capabilities. Uh, so the forensic is where we take it to the next level. So on the detection side, the detection side, we utilize that to the, eliminate the false alarms in, in actually triggering the event. But what our cameras does on top of that is it actually collects metadata along with the detection. So it gives us more information, it bundles this metadata with the video and transmits it to the VMS as part of the package and allows us to be able to search video based upon this metadata to make our forensic searches quicker. So some of the things that we catalog, catalog based upon people and faces. So the human attributes that it'll collect, it'll, it'll make best guess at gender. Uh, so whether it's a male or a female coming into the scene, uh, it'll actually do an approximate age, whether it's an adult or a child. So if I'm looking for a video in there, I can search based upon that. It identifies the upper and lower color for top color and bottom color of the person coming through the scene in, in archive that. So I can search, show me all adults wearing blue shirts or all adults wearing black pants. Uh, it'll identify whether the person is wearing glasses or not wearing glasses. It also detects if they're carrying an item such as a bag or a backpack within the scene. Uh, we can detect whether the person is wearing a mask coming in, which is very beneficial in today's world. Uh, and we also have the ability to fine tune if they're trying to trick the system without a mask in, in search video based upon the person wearing a mask or not wearing a mask within the video. From a vehicle perspective, uh, we identify the vehicle and classify the vehicle by vehicle type, whether it's a car, truck, bus, motorcycle, uh, those type of aspects of it. We also identify the vehicle color, whether it's white, blue, green, purple. We'll catalog whether or not there is a license plate present. Now, this is not doing license plate recognition. It's just identifying that there is a license plate in view or no license plate in view. Uh, and what I can do with these attributes is depending upon the VMS, I can search off it. So if you see this video window here, this is within our Wave VMS ecosystem. If I type up in the corner, uh, it might be hard to read on the screen, but I'm typing in uh, orange male. So it's showing me all males with orange shirts that came into the field of view. Those are the best shots that I was telling you about. Now I'm going to search for black truck. In here, it gives me thumbnail previews of all the black trucks. I click on one of the images that plays down the video. We also have plugins with our forensic search pieces. I work with a Genetech platform if you're running Genetech. So if you're doing a vehicle search, you can select your search people on here, select vehicle, select what type of vehicles you're looking for. In this case, looking for a bus or a car, selecting white and it automatically queries up the white video, the white cars that came within the video and you're playing back video automatically. We also have the ability to do a, a person search. So in this case, I'm gonna search females wearing a red or purple uh, on here. 
You see, I found multiple pieces of video. And I quickly play back the video clip that I want to play back from the best shot aspect of it and quickly drill down in the video. So you see, forensically, this saves you a lot of time uh, on the searching capabilities uh, in there. We also support a plugin with Milestone as well, the same type of features that allows you to search. So kind of recapping this piece of it is there's two primary pieces to our AI solution. The detection side, which we're setting up our rules, whether it's just motion in an area or a line crossing or entry exit zones to only trigger based upon a person, a face, a vehicle, or a license plate. And I can select which one. So if I have an area and I only wanna know if there's a person in the area, I can have a drill only based on a person. That part of our feature is done within the camera, works via our OnBIF driver. So we'll work with anybody's video management systems out there that support our cameras or an OnBIF solution. The second side of the house is the metadata side, which is just forensic search capabilities where we're bundling that metadata in and allowing you to be able to search forensically for yellow buses or red trucks or what have you. The metadata search does require the VMS to support our AI plugin. Uh, currently today, that AI plugin is supported on our Wave VMS, Genetech, and Milestone. Uh, so those solutions out there, you can use the metadata. We have other VMS companies that are working with our integration department to write those features out so that list will be growing. So if you have a, a VMS besides Genetech, Milestone, or Wave and want to use these features, work with us. We'll let you know where we are on the progress of it. Um, so the, the kind of the big question that comes to mind and what we focus on here is what are some real world use cases? What can I really do besides tripping alarms and, and searching video? How can I use this in my business? So the one piece is from a business intelligence piece of it. If we want to count people coming in and out of facility or do queue line management, historically, we used to have to have dedicated cameras for people counting a queue management. They're typically mounted directly above the scene, looking straight down, or they were the 3D stereographic cameras that the only purpose of that camera was people counting or queue line management. Utilizing the artificial intelligence, I can actually take a camera with a normalized field of view. So in this case, I have a camera watching my turnstiles in here. Since I'm only identifying the people in here, I can draw my line and my turnstiles and I can actually do my people counting with the same camera I'm using for my video surveillance. Uh, same thing with the queue line management. Instead of having a dedicated camera doing a top down scene watching the queue lines, I can have my surveillance camera that's watching my front desk or my line area be a dual purpose camera. It could be recording for security purposes as well as doing my queue line management. And it's more accurate because it's actually using the people AI application. Next piece is face mask detection. Uh, we talked about that a little bit. This is a free analytic that runs within our cameras. It runs completely on the edge, license free uh, out there. So if you do have face mask protocols or uh, requirements in your facility uh, and you want to be able to trip alarms or bookmark or flag video based upon people wearing or not wearing their face mask, you can do this. It can detect up to 10 masks per second in the scene. Uh, we see this being used more and more today, mainly for employee management type pieces where you're in a manufacturing facility or a warehousing facility where you have face mask protocols. You want to make sure your employees are actually wearing their mask when they're supposed to. And if they're not flagging video or alerting a manager, the person's not wearing a mask. Uh, our algorithm is fine tuned enough that it will actually detect if somebody's trying to trick it. So if you're trying to hold an object over your face, like a phone or a book or something like that, like this person coming in, they detected no face mask. Uh, here in a minute, you'll see somebody holding the phone up. It's identifying that that's not a face mask. So we, we do have the algorithm fine-tuned enough that it will detect people trying to trick the solution not wearing a mask properly. The next piece is social distancing. This is another free analytic that's included with the camera that's built on there. It's run completely on the edge, no server required. With this, we can actually monitor the proximity of people in pub public spaces and create alerts or bookmarks uh, or events based upon people not following social distance practices uh, within there. So if you have areas that you wanna monitor, now the, the one thing you wanna keep in mind to set expectations properly, 
is as you see the field of views over here, our decent sized field of views we're monitoring on here. It works really well in this type of uh, scenario, but I wouldn't be able to look at say an entire food court in a shopping mall and accurately detect social distancing. But in situations like this where I have uh, a relatively normal size room or uh, a space, I can monitor that on there. I said, this is provided license free and runs on our AI cameras. Uh, we can also do occupancy monitoring. Uh, this is became popular with the retail space with returning to normal to where retail locations were limiting the number of people they can have in their store at a certain time. Uh, instead of having to put a person on the door clicking and counting people coming in and holding off traffic, I can actually put one of our AI cameras at the entrance, draw a line. The camera itself runs a, a free application as a platform that hosts out this screen you see on the right hand side I'm circling here as an RTSP stream, which can be sent to a decoder on a monitor in the front door. You set the limit within the camera of how many your capacity is. If it exceeds capacity, it can turn red. Tell people to please wait. You can customize the logo and, and the verbiage on the screen to what you want or you can have this going to a monitoring station on the says, so I said, this is an RTSP stream hosted by the camera. So you can just have the camera in the monitoring. We do have the ability to aggregate up to eight of our cameras into one. So if you have multiple entrances uh, to your facility, so think of like a Home Depot, for instance, or a Lowe's or a Walmart Target where they have you know two, three or four uh, customer entrances as well as play entrances. You can have up to eight cameras watching entrances all connected together, aggregating their count to keep back our count. But this also goes beyond the COVID world, the pandemic that we're in. And, you know, think of all the spaces out there that have large hotels that have meeting rooms that have capacity by fire marshal laws or nightclubs or event spaces that are limited to 500 capacity by fire, fire marshal. You can actually use this to monitor your entrance instead of having to put the guy at the door counting how many people are going in and out and maintaining a line. You can put this into an automated state. So from a product lineup uh, perspective out there, we have several cameras uh, available within this solution. We have anything from uh, indoor and outdoor dome cameras, flush mount cameras, uh, box style and bullet cameras, as well as a, a, an 8K camera that's available to support this solution. And it gives you a lot of abilities to place cameras where you need them. Uh, the AI comes included with the camera, so there's no additional cost for the AI when you buy the camera. It's just a matter of setting it up and configuring it. Um, all the, the metadata, the, the forensic detection search is all run on the edge, so eliminates the need to have a server on the head end location to, to aggregate the data and parse through it and gives you a really good um, solution to maximize the use of your video surveillance to make your uh, event detection more accurate, uh, as well as speed up the time it requires for your, your people searching video to do forensic searches uh, on the video. So at this point, there's about 10 minutes left into the session. So I wanted to open the door up to see if there's any particular questions that people have along the way. So we had a question come in saying, can you combine line queue counting in and out across two or more cameras if the area is too large for just one camera? So with our traditional people counting uh, aspect, now we do not have the ability currently to aggravate multiple cameras from a, the, the generic people counting 
uh, algorithm within the business intelligent aspect of it. So it'd be a count per door or account per entrance. Um, but you could, if you did have that scenario, you could utilize our occupancy monitoring aspect of it. Uh, and instead of utilizing it to trigger the events on that aspect of it to actually aggregate the number of cameras on there. So it'd be using the occupancy sensor as a people counting aspect of it. But with our traditional business analytics, you can't aggregate the two. We'll give it a couple more minutes here, see if we have any other questions come in. I don't see any more questions coming across the chat. Uh, so I'd like to thank you guys for attending our uh, demo on artificial intelligence. Uh, if you have any more questions, uh, my contact information is on the screen here. Once again, I'm Chad Umbarger. I'm the, the National Council Sales Director for Convergent Technologies at Hanwha Techwin. Uh, feel free to shoot me an email or, or give me a call to answer any questions. Uh, and we're here to, to help you uh, any way that we can. Uh, thank you for attending our session.